So here's a little backstory on how I came to join Fit for a King. I, I played in local bands for 10 years and sold thousands of tickets trying to open up for just about everybody. And in that time period, just kind of wondered why things weren't working out for me and ended up going into a, a little bit of a darker direction and getting into the party lifestyle. And I've definitely had my, uh, w you know, experiences and issues with alcohol, drugs, women, that whole direction. And, uh, you know, I was raised as a, a Lutheran, Protestant. You know, it, it was always a challenge for me because I always wondered why things just wouldn't pick up from, from how hard I was trying to work. And I think, and, you know, as I got older, in my early 20s, I kept really pushing. And, you know, by the age of like 23, 24, I kind of just gave up and thought it wasn't gonna happen. My band broke up, started just playing acoustic sets on my own and really kind of sunk into this hole of, of partying and, you know, living in this horribly debaucherous house and doing things that I never really imagined that I would do, um, you know, lots of drugs and, you know, being, you know, really all over the place with, with girls and not having any, any real focus in my life. You know, you just get in that point where you're working as a waiter, doing your nine to five, and then, you know, when you're off, you just, you go crazy. And one day, a friend of mine um, introduced me to the members of Fit for a King because they were looking for a new guy. And we got talking, and, and over about a three month uh, span, we were sending demos back and forth and everything. And, um, you know, I was kind of left at that same place where I was like, well, why, why aren't they pulling the trigger? Why aren't they, you know, asking me to come and join their band? And I was talking to my mother about it one day and uh, she asked me a simple question, which relates to, you know, who I am as a person and us as a band, which is, am I praying about it? And I wasn't. And it, it wasn't a thought at that time. And I started to. I received my phone call a week later. When I joined the band, I put everything on the table. I said, if you're gonna take me on, like, these are the things I've done, this is where I've been, this is where I am as a man, and this is who I'm working to be. And I think that it's very clouded for a lot of people to think that they aren't gonna have struggles. Every single kid that's here at Warp Tour today, they have a battle with, whether it's they look at themselves in the mirror and they don't like themselves, or they've got a mom and dad who just don't care about them, or they, have drug or alcohol problems, or they're just too self-righteous and are too indulged in their own happiness. And all of those things are an issue. It, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means that we all have something to work on because we're all human. You know, it was really eye-opening for me because I got the chance to just jump right in it. I, you know, and, and people look at it as like, wow, like that's such a crazy opportunity, but I put in so much work beforehand where I think it helped to prepare me for, for who I could be rather than who I was at the time. And the person that I was at the time was someone I was not happy with. When I came and, and left for Texas, it's not like you can go and you can bring all your friends and bring your lifestyle with you. I'm, I'm being with a bunch of guys that I don't know anything about, mm -hmm. men that I, I just don't want to do anything but impress. So I just said, I'm done. and. It really, that's why I consider it my saving grace because it taught me self-restraint. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 26 years old. What kind of self-respecting 26-year-old man sits most of his days on the couch and mm -hmm. just drinks with his friends on the weekends and doesn't do anything productive? Have I stumbled? Many times. Yeah, you know, everybody stumbles. I'm not perfect. Right. You know, I'm, of course I'm going to have troubles. I'll, you know, everybody's going to have troubles. Luckily, you know, I, I would never say that at any point I was uh, addicted to anything other than my own self-righteousness. Because I was too stubborn when people told me, like, dude, you need to wake up to actually make a change. I didn't. I just kept doing what I wanted to do. I was content with my crappy little job and, and just let myself just be in this fog. Um, you know, I think that the outlook that my band members have and the fact that they're not into those kinds of things, like, you know, I, you, know you can go out and have, have a casual beer or whatever and that's fine, but like, I'm at work. I'm not, I'm not here to be some 
wasted guy on stage who's stoned and drunk out of my mind and trying to be cool. Like, I'm, I'm here for a purpose. And if you waste those 30 minutes you have every day on a stage by being completely wasted and, and drunk, like, it's not gonna do anything. You're not gonna last. You're not gonna be that guy. Even if you think that you're happy, you're not. Because if you were really happy, you wouldn't be doing those things. Yeah. So I was really lucky with that and, you know, primarily just my family and my friends back home, they really supported me. You know, I only had four days notice to up and leave everyone and nobody said stay. Everyone said go. I had a, a guy today that, he's a fan of the band and he, uh, he made a post on Facebook about how he was going into rehab. I didn't know him or anything, but I sent him a message and I wanted him to know that I know what it's like and I know how hard it is to get through that. And I was there for him. And actually, we got to meet today. And I want you to know I, I'm willing to meet any of you. I'm willing to talk to any of you at any time. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're having a trouble with drinking, but you're, you know, your friends are trying to get you to come out to a party, hit me up instead. If you're you know, going out and, and you want to stay away from Coke or whatever, or just you look at yourself in the mirror and, and you hate yourself, I'll talk to you about it. I'm not gonna be that guy that writes a song and it, it helps you, but I'm not actually there for you physically. I, I would love to be there for each and every one of you. And if any of you have the time and would like to talk to me, I'll always make the time for you. So.